Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be replacing our trans cooler valve, also known as the N82 valve. It is a valve that's located just beside your driver's side downpipe mounted to the body of the car. It's almost right next to where your downpipe connects to the bottom of your catalytic converter. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward replacement. But one thing that's going to be different about this video versus my other videos is that I'm not going to actually be doing the work. I have my car at my favorite shop out of Motorsport in Wilmington, North Carolina, and they were letting me take over the shop for a day because we were going to be replacing the test pipes on here, getting ready for the Send exhaust install. And my buddy Nico, who's a technician for Audi, came over to help, and he went ahead and did this job for me since he does them day in and day out and has lots of experience with it. So what's going to be different on this video is since I'm just filming, uh, there's going to be some voiceovers like my normal videos, but at the same time I'm going to let Nico explain a bunch of things as he does in the video. So if anything's confusing, just leave a comment below and ask your questions and I'll try and get to you as soon as possible and uh, if I don't know the answer then I'll you know, relay it to my friends that do. But this is one of those fixes that is a really simple fix, you only need Let's see here, you need a pair of pliers for some hose clamps, you need some actual hose clamps to shut off the coolant hoses so you don't lose all your coolant. You're going to need, I believe it's a T30 Torx bit, and uh, just some regular tools that everybody should have in their toolbox. It's, it's very straightforward. I'll list all the materials needed below and also be in an Audi Zine thread that's linked to in the description. You're going to uh, have to get a few things, it's about $150 in parts but I'll leave all the part numbers below. Uh, make sure you watch the entire video and listen to everything because he gives a lot of really good information. Now, this fix is very cheap if you're gonna do it yourself and not hard, but at the same time, if you ignore this problem, it could result in catastrophic failure of your TCU. So what happens when this valve fails is that it can get stuck open or it can get stuck closed. If it gets stuck open, it still kind of functions. You're gonna get a code and the code is P2753. But what's gonna happen is you're going to see coolant migrate through the wiring harness out of the top of the valve and it will start to progress up the wiring harness. And you won't really see that because it's all covered and it can potentially get into your TCU and then fry your TCU. And then you are you know, in a bad way because you're gonna have to replace at least the TCU. Some people have even had to replace their entire transmission. Um, so don't let it get to that. Go ahead and fix this if you get the code or another sign of it is that you'll be seeing little tiny puddles of the coolant underneath the driver's side of your car where your downpipe is. And when I say little, I'm talking like maybe uh, a little bit bigger than a half dollar size from an overnight drip. It's not a ton. The easiest way to check to see if your valve has failed is to get underneath there and just pull the actual connection, the electrical connector on the wiring harness out of the valve and look at it. As you're going to see in this video, it'll be completely corroded and you'll see coolant in the actual uh, electrical harness and it'll be blatantly obvious that you got a problem. So make sure you stay on top of this so you don't have to spend a lot of money on an unnecessary repair when this is so simple to do. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into the DIY, but make sure you like the channel, subscribe, and get your alerts so that you can stay up to date. We're going to have the Send Exhaust installation video coming up really soon and I can't wait to get that to you guys. But uh, without further ado, here we go. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is get the car jacked up, obviously, and then remove the belly pans and remove this cross brace that my friend here is removing. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you can check out my video on doing your transfluid change and it'll show in detail how to do that, but this will give you a lot more room to work in the area. Okay, so your valve is located directly to the right of where your catalytic converter meets the top of your downpipe. You can see the silver shield over it, and we're going to remove that shield here with two, I believe they're T30 Torx screws. Uh, don't quote me on that, they might be a little bit less, but you got to have Torx bits to work on a Volkswagen. So you got to remove those two, that'll pull the shield off, and once the shield is off, you can start to pull the entire valve down, and you can pull the electrical connector off to inspect it. Okay, so now once you see my friend Nico pull the connector off, you'll see that there's coolant and corrosion in the connector and the housing. That's a clear sign that the valve has failed and that coolant has migrated up the wiring harness. So I'm gonna let Nico explain why that's bad. Now the thing is, if coolant migration goes in there and usually it goes up your... I heard it can ruin the TCU. Right, right. So we have to check and see how this looks inside the wiring. Okay. Well, I've got the replacement wires, but I guess right. hopefully but we don't have gotta to see deal. how long it, it, it's corroded because okay. it goes into the wire and it could move up. 
Okay. You know, and that's how he fries in TCU. Well, luckily the TCU hasn't had an issue, and I haven't had a code for anything other than just the solenoid being bad. So hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. That's his toes. Yeah, that's bad. So now that you've confirmed that your valve has failed and you have to replace both parts of the components here, including the electrical connection, more than likely some wire, as well as the valve, you need to go ahead and find out how far the coolant migrated up your wiring harness. So to do that, you're going to do what Nico's doing here, and you're going to start to separate the heat shield that's wrapped around it, and then you're going to have to start to cut off the connector and follow it up until you find good wire. One thing to keep in mind when you do cut the connector off and you start to remove the wiring harness to find good wire, make sure you cut the wires where they are offset. That way when you go to splice in the new wire and you tape it all up, you don't have a giant bundle of wire that's bundled together. Yeah. This is pretty good. See, my, I would look at that and be like, oh, that looks great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, well, the worry to me is like the the sheeting is kind of like uh, it's bubbly a little bit. You okay. Know? This one's tight, so it definitely didn't get that far. In I mean, do we one. need to cut up higher just to be safe? I'll cut a little higher because uh, you're supposed to have them in, uh, in the offset. Oh, okay. Not okay. in the same spot. Gotcha. Um, so I'll just go a little higher. That's starting to look better there. There you go. Now it's like tight and the yeah. shooting is still oh, white. Okay, I see know? what you're talking about. All so right. before it was like, you can see a gap in between yeah. the shooting and the copper. Here it's not so bad. That's good to know because that's something that nobody's talked about. They're just like, yeah, hey, just replace the wires and right. my dumb ass, I had to cut it. And then, you know, you end up shorting out the other one. See, now mm. it's all white. It's uh, nice and tight. Right. That's good to go. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh my god, it didn't from my TCU. Yeah. Seen that too. <laughs> yeah, that's something I don't want to deal with. All right, so. Go. Once you've established how high up you need to cut your OEM wiring harness, you can get your crimp connectors with heat shrink and go ahead and put them on the OEM wiring harness to get ready for the replacement wires. So now it's time to determine how much of your replacement wire you need to use. I bought two full replacement wires and you can see there there's a connection at each end of it. Um, I wasn't sure how much I was going to need so I just got two to be safe but we didn't take a ton of wires off my OEM harness so Nika was able to just cut this one in half and then measure out the distances that he needed for each replacement wire. Now remember you had to cut them offset so one of your wires should be longer than the other one. That way when you go to tape everything back up you don't have a huge bulge of repaired wire when you heat shrink it and then wrap it in electrical tape.
After you've gotten your replacement wires cut to the correct length, you can go back to your OEM wiring harness with the crimp connectors, put the replacement wires in there, crimp them down, and give them a very light tug just to make sure they're secure. And then after that, you need to go ahead and get your replacement electrical connector and get it wired up to the replacement wires. And Nico will explain how to do that. And then at the end of the video, I have a little bit more in-depth explanation as to how to make sure your wires are aligned correctly. One is purple, one is green, or two is green. So one is purple. Uh, you know what? I'm so like paranoid about this shit. Yeah. They're just putting in the wrong shit, you know? Oh yeah. Volkswagen's in their electronics. Yeah. How does it just click in? Yeah. Nice. So it clicks in. Cool. You have to have it aligned for the lock, so. yeah. and then you have to push that purple thing. In. Is the purple thing like a locking switch? Yeah, that is like a locking thing. Gotcha. After you've got your wiring harness completely repaired, it's time to heat shrink the wires. You do this either with a lighter like Nico's doing or with a heat gun. Just be very careful not to damage the wiring harness itself. Just go easy on this and get a good shrink wrap with the heat shrink to make sure that no moisture can get into the repair. Once you are finished with that, then you want to put the wiring harness back into the heat sheathing, try and wrap that around as best you can, and then use some electrical tape to seal the entire repair together and make it as hard as possible to get any kind of moisture into your repair. Like they're slightly on each other, but yep. if you had them next to each other, you have a big pull. Gotcha. Shit. That makes sense. This tape's actually for warranty. It shows you did a warranty repair. Gotcha. Okay, the next step is to actually clamp off your coolant hoses that go into the valve. I got these two clamps from Harbor Freight. They're specifically designed for this. I think they were about $11 a piece. They worked perfectly. So go ahead and get the clamps on the pipes to stop the flow of coolant. That way you don't lose a ton of your coolant and have to deal with that because the last thing you want to have to do after this is bleed your coolant system after having to add more coolant. Make sure you get some kind of a drip pan to catch coolant because the valve is going to have coolant in it and when you pull it out, it's going to make a mess. Same thing with the ends of the coolant lines that you clamp. There's still going to be some coolant in there, so be prepared for that. Make sure you wear eye protection. If you're under the car on jack stands, just be really cautious. Okay, so just to remove the coolant hoses from the valve, all you need is a good pair of pliers. If you have clamp pliers, even better, but you're gonna squeeze on the spring clamps and pull them back over the hose, and then you're gonna just wiggle the hose off of the fitting on the valve and do that for both sides. Remember to dump the coolant out and not get it everywhere. After you've removed both the hoses from the old valve, you can get your new valve and put the hoses back over the fittings of the new valve and then get ready to reattach it to the car. Just don't forget to put the spring clamps back over the fittings once you put the hoses back on the valve.
Now once you've finished reattaching your coolant hoses to your valve, you can reattach the wiring harness that you repaired. Make sure you push it in until it clicks, and then you can go ahead and reattach the entire valve, including the cover, back to the vehicle with your two torque screws that you removed earlier. Here's a close-up of my OEM valve that failed. You can see all the corrosion in the connector there. It was just really chewed up from the coolant migrating out of it. Okay guys, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the electrical connector for when you're doing this replacement for your trans cooler valve. Um, this is the connection. Uh, you should get a new one. Uh, it has the two wires that go in. One's green, one might be purple or black, but um, the green should match up. So one thing to remember, is that when you cut these leave the wires in here so you know which one's which because when you use the repair wire which is just yellow you need to make sure that the repair wire that would be connecting to the green wire on the wiring harness connects into the same side and the way you can figure that out is if you look really closely here let me see if i can get it to focus real quick all right if you see there it says one and two. Maybe I try a different camera here. There you go. So you see how it says one and two. So just make sure that whatever these wires are connected to on the wiring harness. So you see that's purple one. There should be a green one that comes out of here. Make sure when you put the yellow repair wire on your wiring harness that you connect them to one and two because otherwise you're going to get a fault. So make sure those all line up correctly. The second thing is, uh, and I'll try and find the part number, but this wasn't listed. Um, if you pull this out here, you can see that blue kind of seal that is a waterproofing seal for the wire now you can get a um what's it called a, a small screwdriver and kind of peel this up like i can probably do this with my knife if we see here um but this wasn't in the parts list and when i talked to my friend who works at audi he said it's not a huge deal because this valve is so high up in the underside of the car that water shouldn't be getting to it um, if you live in a super humid climate or an area where you're driving through lots of puddles all the time then this is something you want to probably make sure you have on your wire um, I can't really get off but if you work on that little metal clip right there you can widen it out and you can pull this off and maybe reuse it I don't know what the part number is from Audi to get those but um, you would put those on the wire before you splice them put it on like over this side splice the wire back on there and then seal it up to the front and then you're going to plug that in and it's all eroded but there's clips on there and it only goes in a certain way and locks but you put it in there and it'll lock in to the plug but you can see this thing was nasty all sorts of stuff in there i had coolant migrate about six inches up my wiring harness um so i got lucky if it migrates all the way up to your tcu it will fry the tcu and then you're gonna have a bad day instead of spending 150 dollars on parts you're gonna be spending thousands of dollars to fix your transmission so if you get code p2753 or you see little droplets of coolant underneath the car on the driver's side where the downpipes are inspect this all you have to do is pull this plug off look in the plug and you'll know real fast if you have coolant migration and um, make sure you take care of it in a timely manner so that you don't have to fix your transmission Okay guys, thanks for watching another DIY video with Audi C7 owners. I hope that you found this really informative and hopefully it'll let you guys feel like you can go out and make this replacement by yourselves. I think it's a really simple DIY, uh, really straightforward, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As always, please comment, subscribe, sign up to get alerts for the next few videos we're planning on uploading soon. We're going to have the send exhaust install. We're going to have a three years of ownership video coming out. We're going to have a issues for new c7 owners that you should be aware of video coming out and we're uh, really excited to bring you guys as always thank you for the support and we'll see you at the next video